Welcome back, folks. Main cast winner brawl. Best of three between Viking GG and Fly to Moon. Fly to Moon, one game up. And we have a game cap because Viking aren't... Well, they actually aren't the ones to ban it. But they aren't going to get the train. But the train is going to be seen. So it's not just going to be a stomp. This time, it's going to be a real game. I swear, I promise. Yeah, I mean, Fly to Moon are like, are you guys stupid? Like, We're not going to give up train protector. You have first pick. We're not giving that crap up. That's way too powerful. I have to say, the Doom SF did not feel like a very good answer to the Train Protector. <laughs> no, and this feels like a good opener from Fly to Moon. You get the Puck, which is strong in itself. But the Centaur, I always love to see this when you see a Doom, right? Because it puts Doom in this really crappy scenario where either he Dooms you or whoever he Dooms, you'll just see Centaur hit Stampede and everyone runs away. Yeah, it's uh, it's really nice. And Viking GG snap pick Templar Assassin, which inherently I don't hate. Um, I think the hero is uh, very good right now. I think it was at one esports that it was being first banned in like every game against EG because nobody wanted to give it to Ovid. The hero is really good, for sure. But at the same time, uh, you don't know what your matchups are. Because um, this puck could just as easily be a four-position puck and not mid. And then on top of that, uh, you are still having the same catch problem out of your first two pickups for Viking GG. So I'm hoping that gets fixed. But right now, um, they have no stun against the Stampede between the two of them. That's a little concerning. Yeah, in fact, TA gets countered by this Stampede pretty heavily seeing as she relies on the slows. And I, at the same time, you have given away the fact that your mid has been picked this early on. Like, TA doesn't really get picked anywhere but the mid, whereas, as you mentioned, Puck is flexible. You can run it in every position except maybe POS 1. People have kind of reared away from that. I've heard terrible tales in high-level pub games of people trying it. Just never successfully. Oh, it does get banned out. I like the Flight to Moon are prioritizing the idea that this Doom is a four and they need to get rid of these kind of bridging type offlaners that build auras or enable and protect. It's funny how like Flight or Viking GG ban away both the SF and the Vengeful Spirit, which they had on their side last time in you know a game that they obviously lost got crushed pretty hard they must have some like very strong feelings about these heroes like for me uh they are putting those heroes almost too much on a pedestal i think vengeful spirit um a little bit is warranted there simply because it does so much from a support position um and synergizes with many lineups and here i could see a puck draw lineup um, with Vengeful Spirit being really powerful, for sure. Um, it's just, why SF? You already had TA. Yeah, it's... I, don't know. I mean, maybe they're trying to put themselves in a scenario where whatever mid gets picked by Flight to Moon, it won't farm well. And when you think of like the best farming mids at the moment that can still aggress and, and do a lot of damage, it's SF and TA stand out above the rest. But that's like... Like, I had to extract a very awkward very in its own vacuum scenario to come up with a logic behind this ban. I don't see it. It's mm -hmm. it's a weird one. Especially considering TA should complete dumpster SF on the lane anyway. Uh, is everything okay? Yeah, everything's are you, fine. Are you sure? Because we, we're, we're down to our last 10 seconds of reserve time for no, Flight of Moon. What the hell? <laughs> it's fine. They're, they're just they're, they're strategizing, okay? This is, this is the critical flip point. Or they accidentally alt-tabbed out of the game and the keyboards and bounces got disconnected and they forgot what they were doing. Yeah, I mean, I guess they, they just planned out the rest of the draft uh, from here on out, I'm hoping. Yeah. That was just a lot of time that we just burned through. Okay, so uh, Razor is a very good answer to Doom and can be a good answer to Templar Assassin. So this is not bad. Um, you can run this safe lane as well as mid. So you still have the options open um, where if Doom ends up, if they commit him more to being a core like they did last time, then you can run uh, Razor safe lane and dumpster that matchup. 
It's um, I like this idea that they've just kind of like committed to what their draft idea is though, because even when you have the farm pick, like there is rarely ever a scenario, kind of a gotcha scenario, right? Where it's like, ah, oh, this is a brood mother game these days. So we do see teams more often halfway through their draft just plan the rest out because I feel like the third pick on each side is where you can tell who's ahead, right? And who's responding to the other's draft. Ten seconds remaining. Uh, let's see if that works out. The Lich coming out, though, Seven not too remaining. bad in conjunction with the Doom. Although this is likely going to be on the safe lane and Doom should be on the off lane. Radiant team pick. And they go okay. back to the field. They'll answer again. Again, just keep on uh, abusing that Doom pickup. So likely a puck support at this stage and the Underlord is the okay. response. Okay, nice. Okay, I was like, uh, please change, change this for the love of God. Uh... Don't run a three position doom again. So this time around, they baited out. It's actually a four position doom. They're going to pick up a hero that is a hard counter to the Phantom Lancer. Hard, hard counter. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, it's and it syncs up pretty well with the doom, right? Because doom, there's a lot of aura creeps you can get. You can get your hands on the Crypt Wolf or even something like the Kobold, which deals with Underlord's weakness, which is a giant slug moving around at the speed of an old man with a Zimmer frame. Um, so it's not too bad. There's a lot of damage actually they put out between them with the Firestorm and the Scorched Earth on the lane. And if this is a Puck support, you most definitely do not want to be on that lane. You want to be on the Centaur's lane, dodging the Underlord Doom. Ten seconds remaining. It makes me wonder, what is Clyde Simeon's final pick here? Five seconds remaining. The, you know, the, the one thing I just don't like about this is that I... I'm not sure if I'm in love with Doom Lich as your support duo. Yeah, you haven't got like solid stuns on any of these heroes, right? Like Underlord, you can you can do that cute build we see a lot with the Aetos Yules, but there's still methods to get out of that. You can still build, for example, BKB on the Razor. It's a bit odd. I, I feel like they need something that just glues it together with some solid lockdown. And once again, like last game, Cap, I'm sitting here thinking, what carry does that? Because last time they needed a frontliner, right? And then at the same time, most of like, the good stunners tend to be these bulky heroes as well, like the Chaos Knights, the Sven's. And you don't feel good about either of those, especially against a Razor. Like, they could just try and mirror that matchup, and all of a sudden, you don't have a lane. Maybe some hmm. some escape. But yeah, I like you know they could play secret again while well, that option's taken out. Um, this would be a horrible AM game. They get the answer. Well, you can kind of break off right because you have the small mobility that comes out from your Earth shock now, so you can sometimes get out of razor range. But instead, they say actually we don't even need razor to match that. Oh. We'll take the bat rider. I thought that was going to be support Batrider, and I was going to praise it, um, <laughs> like as a really cool idea, uh, and how to be able to beat the Underlord lane. But instead, it's a uh, support Centaur, which is even more surprising. Uh, we don't really see this anymore. I feel like it's been must be a year now since we've really seen Centaur run as a five or even a four. It fell out of favor and just became a free completely again. Yeah. Um, okay. So. This idea, for, okay, so first of all, they picked Ursa into the Phantom Lancer. Um, that's just not a great matchup. You do have the wounds that stay on the Phantom Lancer, though. That is not dispellable. Um, so therefore, when he doppelgangs, you can quickly identify the real one. Uh, hopefully, you're just able to identify the real one in the first place, because Ursa is a single-target hero. Um, but the Bat Rider pickup is is pretty cool all, all around, um, just because it's a very good Bat Rider game. Right? It's good against Ursa, Underlord, and Templar Assassin. It's good against all three of those cores. And that's why, for me, like I initially thought it was a support because I thought that was how they were going to deal with this uh, Underlord matchup. Uh, that That is very hard for Underlord, getting sticky napalmed and, and run at. He hates that. Um, but instead, because it is such a good Batrider game, it actually needs to be upgraded to a core. Right, because uh, your Centaur is going to have a bad laning phase against Ursa. Uh, that's a bad matchup. And 
you as the support bat rider will be able to create some space for the phantom lancer but it's not like pl comes online super quickly or anything so if your centaur's game is bad and your razor game you know we'll see how it goes um then you could end up kind of getting run over a little bit too quickly so instead core bat rider matched up against ursa great matchup and in general should be having a good game an early game of boots of travel um drums that sort of deal like he can push out lanes and all three of these cores are going to hate their lives against bat yeah and i also like the fact that they just have these two cores that can get active quickly in the raise and the bat rider right when you see some of the pl we saw it be successful last game because you had these two that aren't as greedy as in they can actually like yeah they love to farm but they can function without that gold in their own rights once they reach six and the thing for viking is you do have the TA to farm up, but if the Ursa, and I always think that, like this is the problem with Ursa at the moment, it's kind of overrated as a pick in a lot of ways, is if he doesn't really win his lane, he struggles to find relevance for the rest of the game, right? It's not a hero that builds Midas anymore. He doesn't have an inherent farming mechanic built into this hero. So you have to win your lane. And because you're against this Batrider, that isn't just unlikely. It's almost an impossibility unless they just run under your tower. Which I think Fly to Moon are smart enough not to do. But time will tell. It's also more brutal now because of the new build on the Bat Rider where you go for the Flame Break max out. Yeah, that is, uh, it's actually such a fun build to go. Because <laughs> it just, it's so much nuking power. You feel like a god. Yeah, and it's like you wouldn't want to go Firefly really against an Ursa anyway. He naturally has a lot of movement speed built, being a 318 base, so. It's just much easier to just sit back for a Molotov at someone's face and watch them scream in agony. So, um, this bottom lane fight, you know, a little hairy. No, but Flight nice. of Moon lost uh, a lot of health for it, but they got four bounty runes, so who the hell cares? Yeah. You didn't give up first blood and getting four bounties, so... You can already see on the chorus. Massive victory. They're bringing out free tangos each. They're like, well, we can afford it. We can we can afford to splurge this Christmas. And, uh, especially Iceberg should benefit a lot from that. Like, you naturally beat the TA, especially at the start of this lane, and you've just got that bigger gold influx to begin with anyway. Well, Doom at least is going to be able to take advantage of one of those couriers. Ooh -hoo. The uh, greedy core into support matchup at top lane of the support five uh puck versus the uh support for doom <laughs> oh he got the okay not bad he did find the ice armor he didn't want to shot for much longer he'd already committed to the devour when he put the ward down and started looking i like dooms that do this though because you want to try and like there's high value creeps in these two camps here on the dire side so best for you to find one early yeah i just have to imagine that this underlord's gonna have a free game with a support puck matched up against him yeah. So these two are probably going to suffer a lot. Um, Phantom Lancers can still get okay CS because Phantom Rush um, and the bonus agility allows you to be able to counteract what Atrophy Aura does to you. Um, but it, it, it's going to be a painful, painful one. Um, the upside is that Flight of Moon can actually win their two other lanes. Um, I'll be watching the mid lane pretty closely from here on out just because I want to see exactly how well a TA, because TA has small options when it comes to CS, because he has bonus damage from refraction, oh. but obviously the lane overall should be bad. Well, as we were looking at that, the kill happens elsewhere, as it's actually Flight to Moon that draw first blood with this combo, Batrider Centaur. We saw it there, Iceberg just, on the kind of minor levels of things, the way he was body blocking the TA so easily there, and just taking every little piece of damage, you can see it already. Finds a DD and says, okay, that's my jungle enabler. I'm not coming back to lane too soon. Yeah. Which makes me wonder, once you have Underlord at four, you just rotate Doom mid to soak XP, right? Because Underlord should be nigh on unkillable at that stage. Unless they rotate three plus heroes. Um, yeah, I'm not sure exactly what they're going to be doing for, for their lanes. I don't know how much Razor wants to be able to rotate. Um... Until he gets face boots drums. That that is like my own personal standard 
is like I want to make sure I'm definitely stronger than anybody on the map because Razor's game is very easy. Like if you try and get too involved too early um, and you lose those fights, then Razor just cannot recover very well from that. So I personally like to make sure that I'm like super strong and I know that I can win any fight that I take. So uh, we'll see if Iceberg actually takes a little bit more time in the mid lane uh, or if he's very active, you know, because he is matched up against uh, Ursa and Underlord side lanes and those are melee heroes that are pretty easily kited. Um, so maybe all he needs is just upgraded boots. We'll see. It's fair. I still like the idea of just maybe trying to turn the Doom into a fourth core because TA is going to yeah. wander back to lane every once in a blue moon and remember why she left. It's like, oh, yeah, that's some, right. I hate that, this lane. That lane, uh, the the space will definitely be opened one way or another, uh, whether it's mid, whether it's uh, bottom lane, you know, taking their safe lane tower and, and Batrider you know, starts doing some boots of travel, rotating around the map sort of deal. Like they're, they're going to open up space um, just by winning lanes and hopefully taking towers and then pushing in those lanes means opening up jungle. Looks like Solari's gonna die at top again, as is always wanna fly. The bot, yep, that'll be a trade, one for one, always wanna fly. Actually, no, he won't give it up. Jump in, Shaq does get the kill and does have a TP to just escape, so he will make it out. There was an attempt lining up in mid as well as Boom had TP back to lane and Slayer was rotating around, but Iceberg was unable to reconnect with that to get the kill. All in all, Underlord still looking like a big winner here. Although then again, I look at Iceberg and now see 22 denies. Good God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, Slayer? Well, Slayer. Come on, look for the core. And fly. They're going to try and catch Boom, which I don't know how. Yeah, it's, it's just run in. I mean, Boom doesn't have boots, but they couldn't quite get there in time. <laughs> this is just so. the supports finding their farm, Cap. <laughs> I don't see the problem here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, very awkward support duo. You know, I said I wasn't a big fan of, of Lich Doom, uh, but at least, you know, individually they have some synergy, right? Scorched Earth with Frost Armor on, Runned Heroes. I can see that. Yeah, you where... have weaknesses and lack of attach. Meanwhile, Centaur Puck's like, ooh, that, that's a real awkward one. <laughs> it's more like, oh, I don't want to get countered when I hit Stampede. It's like, let's just pick the Puck to be safe. It's a good hero anyway. Oh, this is in a lot of trouble. He tried to roll out, but nice stomp. And I'll just dive on the tower. Looks like Slayer's ready to dive as well. Doesn't commit, though. Instead, he snipes some Corys. Oh, he's going to find a double Corya. Hey, little froggy. At least it gave <laughs> over the blades. But that was a little cluster truck of Corya massacring going on right there. And double Corya kill. Nice. That's why I love Puck so much. Like, when the patch dropped, you remember when everyone was trying Nature's Prophet? Like, oh, yeah, we'll just we'll put down deep wards and we'll just snipe. Puck just does it. By accident, almost, right? You like you lose your old crew yeah. and you just move on. Iceberg has now moved on from the lane to the enemy jungle and found the TA. Yeah, the really nice aggressive vision that was laid out by the supports. They got two different wards in that triangle area because they know the Underlord or the TA uh, or the Doom actually are, are both going to fall back to that area at some point. And Iceberg makes it a pretty simple rotation with his phase boots, so... Why is it, actually, what I also love about this is they now expect there to be vision there and they'll go to D ward, right? But they're only going to look for one. So then TA probably goes there again, thinking it's the safest spot on the map and just dies the same way. What an amazing thing. This is like I, oh. I am always uh, favorable of these situations, by the way. Um, the Underlord versus PL matchup. Uh, super hard, yes. Uh, the PL feels pressured, yes. But he's still getting a basic amount of farm. Yeah, and you, know, you, you don't need him be to okay. be great out of the lane, right? Is the big difference yeah. as well. Like, he, he's uh, he's not going to die, and he's going to get his level 6. So, uh, at that point, he'll just start jungling. And then eventually, yeah, he just recovers through the jungle, while TA... <laughs> you can't even recover in your jungle. They won't let you. Aramis is just dead. I don't... I, I like so this idea well. yeah. sooner, <laughs> but... <laughs> Here's my problem, Cap, right? I like the idea of the Doom soaking XP on the mid lane when the Razor isn't level 8. When he doesn't have phase boots and move much quicker than you. But when he's at that point, it almost feels like an oddity to think you can even be in the lane anymore. Yeah. Uh. Oh. Okay, Aramis will get one of the woods. Such simple 
Yeah, I'm scared about what this Doom's gonna actually do at this rate. Uh. Yeah, because Underlord, uh, he has like this really weirdly high win rate in pubs right now, and I don't discount the fact that I, I think he is a good hero, but he's not a playmaker. Um, no. Not at all a playmaker. So he can't do anything to stop this massacre like Solari, who's gonna die again I in the mid lane. I think it's gonna Iceberg be two. gives him the BM pause. <laughs> Just a little are you okay moment. It's, well, they just realized this. Wait, this isn't one kill. This is two kills right now. Because that's a level two Scorched Earth. There's no way in hell that Aramis runs away quick enough. And also, Slayer is in the neighborhood with an arcane rune. Pigeon, you said you would shit talk people whenever you would game, right? Whenever I what? Whenever you game, right? You said oh, you, yeah, you, you like to, to play yeah, the yeah. player. But they're yeah, not yeah. doing it right now. They just... Okay. They so, my talking. question to you... My question to you, I mean, because that would be a 2 BM, right? Uh -huh. it, like, the community would start hating on you. Maybe there's r rules in the tournament that say, you know, you can't uh, shit talk people, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, TI notoriously does not have any rules about that. Mm -hmm. So, would you be somebody who all chats if you were a player in TI? I think it's a fair game. Like, like this is this is that whole argument that goes back. It's like, if it isn't in the rules, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, do you want to be Na'Vi or do you want to be Loda asking how is that balance? How is that allowed, right? Like, mm -hmm. the rules are available to everyone. And I mean, it's, it's TI Cat, dude. I, do you know how much money that is? Screw your honor <laughs> logic, right? Yeah, you can be honorable and sit there with your knightly helmet just on your chivalrous horse while I'm just basically splurging cash thousands of dollars at the time in the nightclub, right? I'd, I'd, take, the easy, I'd take the easy method of winning. If it screws with the players, enough. I'd do it. Fair enough. Sometimes sometimes you're really good. Sometimes you're just really good at making people bad. And sometimes you're both. And that's usually how you win TI. So I've got at least half of it down. See, uh see I I uh I can't I can't shit talk uh like in those specific scenarios because I am uh too often afraid of a comeuppance. Oh yeah, you're one of those. You're 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 one of those yes. people that says ease at the end of the game, Cap. This is what it sounds like. Yes. See, I like, uh, I don't like that. I'm like, if you're gonna commit to the ease early on, I respect you whether you lose or not because you actually had the balls to put it on the line. Yeah. No, I I, I totally <laughs> I totally get that. I uh, it, it's more like for me, it's like uh, when somebody does all chat, um, and shit talk. I won't respond, and oh, then I'll hit him the with a real good zinger, like, once the game is over, you know? That's Cause, respect. Because I, I hate the comeuppance so much. I hate the, I shit talk, like, especially if that, if the person, like, I I'm, I don't shit talk all chat in the first place. So that person's going to do it first, right? And then you try and come back at them, and then you get the comeuppance. That's literally the worst possible scenario. The shit talker uh, won, and he beat you in the shit talk, too. Yes. You know, it's just kind of like, ugh, it's terrible. I, so I can for me, the only win the bounce is, back. Uh, is either saying nothing and lo losing or saying something and winning. <laughs> okay. I can, I can kind of see where it come from. Like, like you know, if I'm going to if I'm gonna just lay it down in the game, right, and just get all chat, it's got to be imaginative. I don't want to be one of those repetitive people that just question marks anything remotely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you, you've got to be creative. It's the difference between a person that comes up with the meme and the person who just recycles the meme for the next four years. Yeah. Oh, top lane. Go on in. He's the oh, he might make it out. It's gonna be close, but no cigar. <laughs> it looked like the one might have been enough, but I suppose. And they're gonna get hard. the deny in the tower, so they're gonna get half that tower bounty, or at least should. Oh, Chad wants to make a play here. That, that's a level eleven razor, sir. Sir, this is ambitious. This, yep, yep. This is where you walk away a little bit. Well, I guess it, you know, makes sure the outpost stays in their favor, but achieves literally nothing. So you would be iceberg right now. I mean, you have to. Like, what was that? You're like, you're a level six yeah. bear. Just sit the hell down. Baze boots drums. Razor is very strong at this point. Yeah, don't take don't underrate fight. the brooch. Let's be honest, the brooch is ridiculous. Yeah, true. I mean, uh, Razor does suffer from mana problems because he spams plasma field so much. Mm -hmm. 
and 25 and, uh, flat movement is yes insane. you will never say no to another 25 movement speed that's why so many mids especially love finding this item because they usually benefit from both of those things like imagine a ta in this type of game yeah you're only going to be farming for most of this but efficiency allows you to move around a lot quicker Uh, who can actually make some plays? Oh, I got a here? trusty shovel too. Oh, really? Most broken tier one item. Hey, unless you're cursed, okay? I was playing, playing a few games with Gareth, and somehow he managed to. I think it's like 25 Thank trusty guys, shovels in a row, not a single goddamn bounty ring. It's impressive. That's impressive. Yeah. Toby, not looking impressive for an underlord right now as he's melting so quickly. I'll just dive under. Nice work. We'll get the kill. And so then you look at that and go like, "What was everyone has else that doing?" That underlord bought us. That too. No, like he he had the he had the free lane, right? Yeah. Like he had all that farm. Uh, so he he has these team fight items, but he couldn't save his lich earlier. Uh, he couldn't save his own life there. It's like that that farm didn't buy us anything. And uh, they're just hemorrhage and kills everywhere. Yeah. This is this, Under this might be quicker yeah. than the last game. It it's beginning to look like it for sure. Underlord's success hey, as uh, as a laner is like very important. Yeah, he's big of it. Uh, but it can't be bought at the cost of losing your other lanes. And sadly, that's the way the draft kind of shook out. He didn't really supplement either. Because he wanted to pressure the PL, he stayed on the lane, right? I feel like Underlord, the way you want to optimally play that is leave him in a situation where like he's not, you know, whether he does good or not, it doesn't really matter to you. And allow him to just cut the wave connect it to camps and double up his farm yeah instead they sat top we saw from the doom I, i'm gonna always go back to that like that that for me is my big pet peeve in this game is the fact that they kind of sat top with that combo for a while didn't really do too much when they could have been sticking the doom mid earlier getting a bigger xp influx and then maybe making a play sooner off the doom Maybe I'm just too big yeah. of a fan of Doom, but at the same time, it is a hero that can make <laughs> things happen when he hits six. Yeah, I mean, my biggest problem is that they just don't have enough catch yeah. for a Doom. Again, I, I hate that. I Oh, it, I'm, I'm actually <laughs> triggered thinking about it. Like, don't run Doom if you don't have catch. Like, that. that's just one of the fundamentals of Doom, right? It's a guarantee. It's like this guarantee. It's the ultimate spell. Mm -hmm. It's the ultimate fuck you. See, you do, you know? you do not get like, to play Dota, person, sir. His spell. Yeah. Yeah. So all literally all they can do is run away, like nine times out of ten. So make sure they can't run away from you. But Viking GG's lineup doesn't do that, right? Who who? What's the catch? Well, there's you do. Okay, nice nice bait. Nice However, bait. Bat Rider is very fast. Goodbye. At least find the park, but that wasn't the kill they wanted for what they committed. No, that wasn't at all. Hey, look. What did I say? Hmm. You want to make sure catch? you have some catch. The Wait. Doom target. You just had four four units surprise him, and he just walked away from it all. It's like, it, it, imagine this game. Like, imagine you take the Lich out, for example. You had the Puck instead. Like, it sounds a bit odd, but they're aggressive laners early on, and the Puck at least gives you control of the Dream Call to ensure you can do something with the Doom. Surprised that Viking didn't actually prioritize. Like, yeah, they grabbed the Doom, but like you said again, they just have these static heroes i always hate it when you like see a doom pick because i play a lot of four at the moment in the doom role and i always see ursus in my games for example it's like this is great if we have a hero that locks down between us then you'll see a ta get picked as well You're like okay we are literally catching no one this game yeah and then yeah underlord is just underlord just feels like them saying well this win like you said this wins pubs Jump in, I always want to oh, fly. Nice, nice storm. storm. The turnaround iceberg sapping away all the damage is getting low, though, so he'll back <laughs> away. Oh, haste rune as well. Bye. Uh, you know you're in a shit ton of trouble when uh, just that little bit spooks you <laughs> into popping your dark rift. The good news is I think like, they didn't Toby's see jumping it. at shadows right now. He's terrified. He's like, guys, I built this mech, and they just hit me down in two hits. It doesn't do anything. Yeah. And it's going to get worse. General building the four staff next. What's Puck? This is the other thing I love about Puck so much. I love Puck and Sand King as these ampers straight off the lane phase. Because they, they love building Veil, vale, right? And Veil vale is just such a high value item right now. If you can just find your hero, you should always be grabbing it. 
I remember watching Zai, like, even on the previous patch, where he was just running off lane everything, and he was, like, Juggernaut, and he built a Veil. He's like, it's great for armor. It's great for the damage. And while the armor's been reduced now, it's still a potent item. Toby. Not a potent hero. A very underwhelming hero. Oh, jump into this gaze. Razor in a lot of trouble. You also buy a little bit of time, though. Needs to move away quickly. They won't be able to get the final hit out. No, they'll still kill him. But it costs them the whole team in general. Almost gets a rampage. <laughs> what? <laughs> out of all yeah, the heroes was, uh... there. Oh, God. That was a sick, nasty coil there from Slayer. Really well done. You just don't expect General to be doing that much damage, but with the Veil and the Dream Call to hold them in place, they just melted. Yeah, they went for five, wiped them, and uh, and Vtune wasn't even in that fight. He was farming mid, took a tower. Uh, we haven't checked up on him in a while, but he's got Diffusal, Yasha, and he will very soon have uh, Manta. Holding on to that Never Shul that no one really wants. We can give him to a puck. I think a Puck would be grateful for that in this game with the Veil as well. Yeah. I le legitimately think Phantom Monster is actually a good hero to hold the, the shawl because he has so much natural armor yeah. that the minus three doesn't make a difference too much. And him, right? it kind of fits him because it used to be the PLs wanted to build Hood of Defiance so they could not be friend early on. They had a bit more protection. So I can see it. It can be useful. Yeah, he switches in now. Ow. Yeah, he's realizing that this Quelling Blade... You know, an extra 18 damage on these neutral creeps that are dying in half a second doesn't change that much. Same frost bounces. Not enough to kill anyone, but does oh, hero he jump Oh, so close, Slayer will go down for his greed. Iceberg, he's gonna fight this. Moving in now, buyback's gonna come out. Dark Rift, Toby trying to get him out in time. Oh. They will bring down the Razor instantly, though. He way up more than he can chew. Nice stomp coming out. PL trying to do the damage. Needs to move out the firestorm, and enough is done to be down two heroes from the side of Viking. And they get more, though. B2 more back away. Booms. Refractions won't last long in the face of the PL. And the Aegis is already gone. The side celery tries to hide, but Slayer will find him. The loser over cross for the waiting TA. Comes back to her imminent death. Ursa does get out, but this is getting worse and worse. I I just can't, like, I'm kind of holding my head in my hands. I saw that Dark Rift cancel, and I was like, oh, no. Yeah, that no, was... You had such a, that was such a great fight. Like, <laughs> like just get out. Don't don't get greedy, but you know he he sees this doom on a PL. We I mean, we can see it's not the real PL, but I'm sure they thought they got the real one. It uh, feels like one of those moments where you bait yourself because of how quickly Razor dies, right? Like uh, yeah yeah, Razor is a quick death, but you've already proven before you can't handle the Batrider, and the PL hasn't been seen for like a century now, so you know he has items at this stage. Yeah, I mean they just think to themselves like we killed one core, we. Uh, we doomed the other, but here's the thing: if they doomed the real PL, you know what would have happened? Razor would have bought back, and when he he would have TP'd onto Shrine. He would have been in that fight. If the PL was in any real danger, so it's like uh, my point is 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 being greedy and staying there and fighting. That was a lose lose scenario. Yeah, they like you, you were 100% well, losing that, fight. and they had the exit as well. But they just I don't know. It seems that Underlord Toby so far has Dark Rifted when he shouldn't, and hasn't when he should. Or at least hasn't completed yeah. it. And that's just going to be Shad dead. No way to protect himself. Trying to move away with the Stampede. Centaur will be able to exit. It's Aramis is chasing forward. But they've got the Blink in five. And the Scorched Earth is running out. Instead, the last yeah, comes I... out. Where are you going, Doom? <laughs> you thought you want this kill? He's over here. Come get him. Oh, I'm boy, just sitting oh, there going like, Aramis knows he shouldn't chase anymore, right? <laughs> oh, no. It's He's playing about music. Rider TPN, right? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Um, yeah. If you I mean, to be, things, to be fair to problem, Toby right? about the Dark Rifts, by the way, it's like a really hard, it's a hard it's game It's a to, long time to wait, right? Yeah. So it's hard when you to get measure. stomped this badly, it's like really hard to read when your Dark Rifts are good or not. Yeah. And no, like if you're jumped on, I don't feel like anyone on the team is surviving six seconds to get out anyway. It's, it's a big ask. Yeah. Plus it's like, uh, he was probably like, his Doom player was probably telling him, you know, I got Doom on PL cancel dark rift you know so it's also a team decision as well so yeah sixteen thousand net worth lead a little bit of a nightmare right now general four stuff away dream call connects under two and now toby needs an out plan quick oh wait near the edge always want to fly he miscalculated that didn't have the range for the blink dagger 
I'll just send them away though, because all they want at the moment is the tower. They realize the Viking, when they make a play like that, blind up into the high ground, they are playing desperate. And nearly a smoke. Okay, this is a tight rapid. I don't know if this works. Yep, smoke breaks straight away. Was that that felt impatient, right, Cap? Like they could have just wide wrapped round and maybe you get in without being seen. But to run up like that. It's, it's definitely feeling desperate. Yeah, I think Viking GG just doesn't have a whole lot of plans in general right now. Like, uh, you're just kind of grasping at straws. Because they know how far behind they are. They know they're going to lose this game eventually. And Storm jumping again. Always want to fly. Always with the free man Storms. Will enable the fight to stampede forward. They'll jump straight in and rage force out. Rage chain frost to bounce around. But on the back line, Lich is already gone. Toby trying to get him out with the dark rift. But Aramis, he's like, team, come back. I say no, sir. They actually cancel the Dark Rift. Buybacks are going to come out now, but Iceberg has timed them so well. They'll try and jump in, but it looks like us is going to be the one to go down first. The Root is going to come out, but Aramis, he's too slow. He can't get close enough to stomp again from Always Want to Fly. Holds them in. Doom just about stays alive. They still kill off Razor on the back line. V2 now trying to fight. Dream Call is going to be there. Last as well. Dragon, boom, on the spot. They'll try and snap the call, but they're a little bit too late. It's too late for TA nonetheless, though. The buyback does come out from Ursa, but that's a dieback from Lich in the meantime. And you still have not addressed the PL issue. As he still refuses to die. At least hey, at least Shad got a bash on Bat Rider still. So got something. But this is like that. That won't fight goes from a long way. losing now is the problem because they've committed so many buybacks. Yeah. That's like the double ended sword, right? Like originally you're like, okay, you know, we're dying, but low spawns because we're not high level. But then you kill a few and you're like, wait, why have I suddenly leveled up like three times? Oh no, my strategy is backfired now. I'm going to be on the sideline for like 60, 70 seconds. Oy, oy, oy. Now the iceberg was well, like that. Um, I don't know. Like, I don't think they know makeup either. analysis, right? Yeah, this is uh, like, this, no, that's I, what yeah, we always for, do. Come on. For, for real though, um, technically Viking GG, uh, they can go late game. Even though you don't want to against Phantom Lancer, it's a single core Phantom Lancer versus uh, TA Ursa duo cores, right? So they can, between each other, um, they can out carry. It's just they don't have, between the two of them, they don't have an answer to PL. Um, so they just have to get the right jump on every fight with a level 25 TA. And instead they jump first on the Turby. Dragging him through. Has no mana left to try and escape. And now the Stampede 4 jump in again. Look at beautiful the stop once more. Always want to fly. Always on free hero as he never wants to die. They'll chase through. Find the kill of Toby. Clean up one of the boom as well. And this could easily be a team wipe. As I'll find another hero. Oh, still left behind. Chad trying to fight with the enraged. But Iceberg too fast. Kiting him out. They'll turn around. Clean him up. Force the GG. It's a 2-0 victory for Fly to Moon. And they don't even break a sweat. I do have to say, I think the uh, the four position centaur did not look bad at all. Um, it's it's a little unfair judging it uh, because it is against so many melee heroes, mm. uh, and he was mixed with a bat rider who naturally allows you to be able to get closer for good stumps in the first place during the laning phase. But like it kind of it, it encapsulates all of the ideas that people are thinking about right now when it comes to supports. Uh, people are trying to be really greedy with their supports, especially with forward positions, because they're getting a lot more farm than previous iterations in the meta. There's just a lot more gold going around, a lot more experience going around for um, supports. It's uh, it's a tanky frontline hero. It gives you a team fighting ultimate. Uh, it's an initiator. You know, there's a lot of good things in that. So um, that that is one thing I will try and keep my eye on is uh, if four position centaur. I think it's very situational, but uh, I think it's kind of legit. Yeah, I agree on the situational part. I think it's like partly to do with the fact they picked the puck as well. Um, but I think the reason I could see it being very good at the moment is because Doom is so popular. And it's just, if you yeah. start off, with, like you want to respond straight away, right? If you see Doom, you know they'll probably try and ban centaur in the next phase anyway. If you then pick the centaur, and you just sit on it and you see if, oh, all right, they got like Ursa. Uh, they got these heroes that can burst you on the lane. You go, okay, I'm just going to switch to be a support. I could see that. I like that we, I always love it when Dota gets to more of a kind of uncertainty point around the roles. So 
but like Puck, for example, for the wrong reasons, being a good pick in almost any role for the team is an interesting kind of dynamic at play in Doha. Admittedly, mm -hmm. Puck needs to be nerfed slightly, but I always love it when you see people come up with new things like, you know, some people are like, oh, maybe Chaos Knight could be a support we had a long time ago. Doom returning to support role. Um, 2B, 2B is kind of like a beautiful inspiration that way because he's always trying to do anything as a four, I think, at the moment. Uh, and I love to see that, you know? It's, it's what you look for. It's the reason a lot of people love watching OG so much is because, as they say, we just have our own idea of what the meta is and we play that. But we'll see if it starts to hold on. I mean, Flight to Moon, they've definitely been the most unique drafting team this tournament. They were the ones that ran the Viper support. They've been the ones going back to the Phoenix Treant combo. They are also now through to tomorrow, uh, where we need to now get them an opponent. So we're going to have a short break, and then we're going to return with the second best of three of the day, which is going to be Gentleman versus Namiga. Stay tuned. It shouldn't be long. We are on a rolling schedule. 